This book is going to be a dictionary of writer's excuses. I'll sue you. I'll settle out of court. Settle. Tell me, Dee, do you always dance when you nap? I wasn't dancing. Just remembering. You look battered. Did you work all night? It's my publisher. I should be your publisher. I understand you. A good idea. I'll take it up with him. You wanted the book and it's not ready. Which excuse do you give him this time? You. Which me? The you who makes so much noise, I can't work. The me who's so quiet, you can't work. The you who steals all my pencils. The me who sharpens them anonymously. Win a nickel, win a dime. Tell me who I am. What's my time? You're from the 18th century. No, I outgrew that last week. Don't you remember? Oh, uh, are you the receptionist for Tamburlaine the Great? Nope. Uh, did you own a palace? Just the lobby. Did your subjects adore you? All oh, the ones I beheaded. Did you take shorthand from Edgar Allan Poe? I took down the whole raven. It was me who added nevermore. And ruined it. I need a hint. You sound like everybody. I presently live in the 25th century and discovered a month beginning with K.H. Of course! You are... Dear Jim undone... of Times, defender of the faith and inventor of the month! And I shall follow you across the fiercest of centuries! To the last planet! On to the war! We march tonight! You know about things, don't you, Dad? You're not too far behind yourself, young lady. You know about things because you've seen them. All I know is what you tell me. You do believe me, don't you? Well, you do, don't you? Of course I do. Shouldn't we check the property before dinner? It's too late and too cold. Neither. Neither. Plenty of time for you to have a martini when we get back. Oh, that's most kind of you, young lady. I'll have my little sip. Now you know what happens to you when you have a martini. I kill. Loot. Plunder. And pillage. And rape. In possible. 
impossible. Why? You'd be too tired, killing and plundering. Pillaging. <laughs> you know, Daddy, nobody seems to pillage anymore. I mean, they rob, they burn, they scream, but they just don't pillage. Why? Well, they sort of pillage, but they don't call it that. People don't seem to swoon anymore or have vapors. Nowadays, they simply pass out. Pass out. <laughs> <laughs> She should know. I guess because he's not a specialist. Guess not. For Deirdre? Of course. Everything I do is for Deirdre. We have isolated you out here, haven't we, sir? That's just part of my profession. Most Deirdres are isolated, and so their companion tutors are also isolated. I have no complaints. How's her schoolwork coming? She's a superior child. I know that. But how's her work? Only fair. She needs rewards. I can't give her any. What about love? I'm sorry. You haven't been engaged to love her. I do love her. But she already has all the love that she can cope with. Deirdre, Deirdre and Strident. I'm not anybody. You made me all up. Did I? I suppose I did. Without me, I'd still have turned up. I would, you know. As what? As, uh, something inevitable. I'd have turned up. Impossible. As who? As, uh, as rain. Thousands of little drops, all called Deirdre. Wherever you hid, there I'd be. Daddy, what's rain? Your rain. Rain is wet. And grass smells sweet. And grass smells sweet. Rain comes down without falling or jumping or hurting or screeching. It fondles, it tickles, it giggles, it sighs. It colors the drab, gentles the cruel. Days in the sky, guarding its young. Guarding its young. <sighs> Rain comes down. That's all I know. I love you, Daddy. <laughs> hey! 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 <laughs> Chicken? Philip! Elwino, 
It's too late, too cold, too strange. I find the hour early, the weather perfect, and my family very lazy. Squelched? Never. Flattened? I'll race you across the garden for a dollar, Mom. Betting prohibited on the premises. And you know what prohibited means. Absolutely no cantering in the garden. No jumping. Or laughing. D. D. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm just being silly. When's dinner? Half hour. Perfect. We have a whole half hour to secure the castle for the night, Daddy. You look very pretty, Mom. So do you. Why does she come out here and, and pretend? Shh. Pretend what? Pretend to be one of us. She sounds silly sounding young. Well, don't I? Of course not. You're old. <laughs> That's not very nice. Of course it is. You're old. I'm old. We're the oldest people in the world. For our age. <laughs> You know, Daddy, every time we come down here, I remember how hard you worked to build it for me. How hard we worked? Besides, what's a princess without a castle? Here again, Daddy. I know it. I'm announcing myself. I don't want to scare anyone. I didn't scare you, did I, Dee? Are you Mr. Striden? How have you been, Philip? I haven't seen you in a long time. You haven't? What are you staring at? I don't know. I guess I'm embarrassed. When I'm embarrassed, I just stare. Well, I was your age, Philip, and got embarrassed. I just stared, too. Go on home and stare at your parents. Deirdre. Why isn't he having his supper like he's supposed to? That's none of our business. Oh, I don't mind, Mr. Striden. We ate very early tonight. My parents have to go to two meetings. I don't like meetings. Never enough fire exits. <coughs> Wish I could stay home and study like you. You do? Your home, not mine. I'm attracted to strange homes. Philip, stop whatever you're trying. I will not be experimented on. Daddy, let's go in. It's too crowded out here. I'm sorry. Philip, stop being sorry. Girls will hate you for it. They'll break your heart. I know about these matters. You should. You're getting older. I'm getting maturer. You're going to be 12 in a couple of days, aren't you? What are you, my biographer? He's your friend. Now be friendly. Can I be part of your birthday plans? I could think of something different and funny, I think. No. Of course you can, Philip. But it's, it's still in the planning stage. I'll tell you what. Every year, we put on a, a pageant for Dee's birthday. Now, now this year, um, this year, we're going to have a, um... It's top secret. We're working on something unheard of, new dimensions, special calendars, maybe even the elimination of teens. You can assert potato salad? Oh, Philip, you're revolting. All you can talk about is food. Only when I'm hungry. When I'm not, I talk about famine and other matters. Philip, you are weird. Just plain weird. Deirdre, now don't take us seriously. You better take me seriously. Everybody better take me seriously. Philip, you mustn't take woman's anger seriously. It generally means they're interested. What? Oh, you mustn't worry, Mr. Striden. Deirdre and I are just... Good friends. I, I certainly hope so. Well, I'll go home now. Well, Philip, come on over after supper. I'm doing some homework. A history lesson with Sarah. History's only my fourth favorite subject, D. Used to be my third favorite. I'll be back. Good night, though. Good night, though. Now, Philip's parents are so involved with the community that sometimes they forget that 
he is part of it, too. I wonder why I pick on him. He's my friend, he makes me laugh, but still I pick on him. I guess because I'm still taller. You're too tall to pick on him. The boy's lonely, Dean. But not crying. You don't believe in crying, do you, my darling? Doesn't help. Do you really have all sorts of plans for my birthday? All sorts. I'm thinking all the time. I intend to make your birthday an occasion of splendor, wonder, and strange goings on. That's pretty general, isn't it? Don't push me. That's the way I work. I'm thinking all the time. Better hurry up. There's no need to hurry. I promised. You can break that promise if you want to. I give you my permission. Why? Because I have something to say to the world before. Before what? Before what, Deirdre? Before dinner. Mr. Stryden has allowed Philip to come over tonight. Well, he likes the boy. And Philip is Deirdre's only real friend. I'm going to a movie in Tea Witch. Mr. Stryden is in his study, if you should need. But there's only one movie in Tea Witch, and we saw it together. I'd like to see it again. But you hated it. I'll hate it again. How'd you get soaked? Swimming. But only your hair's wet. The rest of you is bone dry. Well, I'm supposed to swim. It's good for me. I'm supposed to engage in normal activities. Well, swimming without getting wet is not a normal activity, even as a lie. Lying is better than drowning. How'd you get your hair wet? Stuck my head in the shower. Why? Lies are better with proof. Come on, let's go on and learn things. Sarah will wait. Got nothing to do but wait. I think I'll get over lying. The more things I know, the less I'll have to make up. Well, I hope so, Philip, because I won't always be around to protect you. Yes, you will. No, I won't. I'm gonna die. So am I. When? I don't know. Well, that's not dying. I mean, really dying. I know when. When? Anytime now. You swear? Well, I wouldn't lie about a thing like that. I would if anybody believed me. Boy, what attention I'd get. Come on, let's go find Sarah. Uh, Philip, where are your manners? I just told you I'm gonna die, and all you can say is let's go find Sarah. Well, you don't want to die a dummy, do you? Stop being horrible and cruel. I'm not being horrible and cruel. I'm your close personal friend. And I don't want people to say my friend was an uneducated dupe when she died. All right, if you're so smart, what good will American history do where I'm going? It's for your reputation, Dee. Your reputation. Reputation? You don't even know what it means. I do. My father says it all the time. Well, lots of people say things. It doesn't mean they understand. We have to try to understand. Even if grown-ups don't tell us, we have to try. You want to see my book on shells and how to collect them? It's in my room. No, but I'd like to see your room. Philip, you're only nine. I'm interested in rooms, not sex. You've been to Europe a lot, haven't you? Yeah, three times, three doctors. We should see our passports. 
Our travel agent says they're collector's items. The customs men are like family. Did you like Switzerland? Boy, the things to see. Things you must have learned. I learned that European doctors look away from you just like American doctors do. My doctor drowned on vacation. I miss him. I'm sure you do, Philip. Before Dr. Gribbets drowned on vacation, he saved my life. Dr. Wirtz, he's still alive. He's our family doctor. Dr. Wirtz hated Dr. Gribbets. Why? Dr. Wirtz never would admit it, but I think he thought that Dr. Gribbets killed his dog. Dr. Gribbets was only trying to save Dr. Wirtz's dog. You, Dr. Gribbets, why was he trying to save Dr. Wirtz's dog? Murray, that's Dr. Wirtz's dog. Had distemper, advanced. Dr. Gribbets try everything. You, Dr. Gribbets, is a vet, isn't he? Was, he drowned. Yeah, I know, on vacation. But he saved your life? Right. Dr. Wirtz wouldn't even treat me. He said, people do not get distemper. He would let me die. Philip, please take it all back. I take it all back. Where's your mother? She said she was going to the movies. Another man? Don't be ridiculous. Another doctor for me. A vacationing specialist. She thinks if she talks to doctors at night, no one will know. What's in there? Just a lot of junk. I love junk. Wait a hundred years and it's antiques. I don't wait a thousand, it'll be priceless. In a thousand years, it's junk again. Philip, don't go in there. I'm just Please, trying to see. don't go in there. Are you gonna die now? No. Sarah would get sore if I die before history. Deirdre? Deirdre, will you please answer the question? These are the times that try men's souls. My soul has been tried all right. Don't take advantage of me. The Articles of Confederation. Was a paper signed by the 13 colonies which preceded the Constitution. Go on. There were a bunch of rich, healthy people who died of old age. Deirdre, I refuse to indulge you. You will concentrate. She's trying. You don't understand. Hey, it's all right. I guess I'm tired. Sometimes I get slutty when I'm tired. I get compulsive, I think. I almost had a good day. I really ought to run away, too. I'll make everybody nervous. You don't make me nervous. You can't be. Even if I ran away, changed my name, hid out, I wouldn't be me. Maybe I'm ill because I'm dare to stride. Maybe I'm ill because people know I'm ill. Maybe. Sarah, have you ever had a case like mine? You're not a case. You are my pupil, my friend, and my companion. No. You're my companion. Paid love, that's what it is. Paid love. Sir, if two paid companions live together, would they break even? I'd appreciate it if I could go to sleep now. in a room. How was the movie? Do you still hate it? I loathed it. Dr. Williams didn't want to see her. He said the history was enough. 
First he said he was on vacation. Can you conceive of a doctor refusing to see people? Well, Dr. Hallett will see her. Did you talk to anyone about Dr. Hallett? Yes, they admit he's done miracles. They can see he's brilliant, but unorthodox. Unorthodox because he won't sit around waiting for God's other shoe to drop. Why am I blasphemous? I'm not here to lecture. But you'd like to. Mrs. Stryden, I know how you must feel. But some of these doctors, I've met so many of them. I've worked in many homes, you know, where conditions were similar. You must be so careful. Careful, Sarah. Careful is for chicken pox or bronchitis. Careful is for beginners. Come on in. Looks busy. Doctor's bills. There's nothing we can do about that. Let's go to a movie. I'll buy. You become a real enthusiast, Ruth. Two movies in one evening. You've seen the same movie in two weeks twice. Jean, we could drive back to Tea Witch, have a beer, discuss the whole world like we used to. And then what will we do? We'll come home, walk on the beach, look at each other. We can even touch on occasion. We can be kind to each other. Jean, we must behave well. Tell me, how does one behave in this house? Perhaps if you started working again. Who said I've stopped? Nobody has to say it. You want to see product? You want to see progress reports? No. You want to see crumpled paper? Coffee-stained pages? You want to see pills? Pencils? You want me to come bursting into your room at three o'clock in the morning, brandishing sheaves of brilliance? You want evidence of my ability to pay? Don't you debit me with your possessions. I didn't buy this house. I didn't sell everything we had to live this way. You blame me, Jean, for giving you a child whom you think will never grow up. Ruth. Ruth. No, 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 nobody ever said that. Then why don't you come into our bedroom at three in the morning? Why don't you come into our bedroom at any time? Where is our bedroom? This is your bedroom, where's ours? In every hospital in the world. Stop looking at me as though I'm to blame. There's no one to blame. Shh. I suppose they were. It wouldn't make the bit of difference. Ruth, don't wriggle around looking, searching for answers, culprits, cures. Don't thrash about trying to call out for help. Stop making scenes. They don't help. My child is desperately ill, and you talk about form? You talk about scenes? Your child. He's dying. I'm talking about Grace. No one dies gracefully. They scream, they bleed, they whimper, they cling, they beg. There is no Grace. Jean, I won't let her die. I won't.
The hyenas are coming down from the hills. Stop that! How? Your father's a lawyer. Oh, maybe it was my grandfather. Don't worry, I'll throw him off the track. After I leave, count to ten, and then retreat to your room. Right, Philip. Deirdre was in the castle just now, wasn't she? It's all my fault. Couldn't sleep. Went for a swim. A big wave must have come out and swept me out to sea. Deirdre rescued me. She heard me call out. And no one else heard? I have this strange voice. Deirdre can hear me when no one else can. I can believe that. You can? Philip, where were you going tonight when you saw her? Were you leaving home? I found this. It's for Dee. Why didn't you give it to her, then? I was surprised. She looks so, so grown up. I forgot. Mr. Stryden, could I stay at your house tonight? I mean, I won't bother anybody. And I've gone to the bathroom for the night. And I don't eat breakfast. And I can brush my teeth without water. How do you manage to do that? So can I stay with you tonight? I'm really very expensive. I mean, dogs cost more to keep. Please, Mr. Stryden. Gee, to wake up in the same house as Dee, laugh at breakfast. It isn't always that nice. You mean because Deidre's going to die? How did you know? She told me. She tells me everything. And knowing that about Deirdre, you'd still like to live with us? Sure. I could look after Dee. 
And afterwards, I could protect her reputation. Reputation? Reputation is a very grown-up word. So's dying. Where's your head? I don't know. I'm sleeping. You look funny. You're all backside and no head. I'm a beautiful sleeper. You always said I'm one of the great sleepers of all time. Move. What's move? This is an ouch without admitting it. Did you take your pill? Pill? Never took a pill in my life. Pills. Americans take pills for everything. They've even got one for when you're feeling great. And you're feeling great? Of course. You're here. Peppermint? Chaser? Say, what are you doing in my room at this? What time is it anyway? I don't care. I forgive you. All my life, men have stormed at my door. What is it about that door? Daddy, a favor. Let's go. To... That's the favor. One favor deserves another. No exertion. None. Absolutely. And you be careful because it's very late for you. of our new book. And don't leave out anything. I'll know. Well, it's about a most exclusive and special place. I knew it would be. It's a place where days and nights combine into one, and therefore, there's no waste of time. Therefore, it's a marvelous idea.
wave. It's come 6,000 miles just to see us. Oh, Daddy. I miss you already. Should not leave home now with a, with a hug while you still love me. I will still love you. Nobody will remember there was on earth. People lived on it. You remember, Daddy? When I took ballet lessons? How good you said I was. Do you remember? I remember. I used to come for you early, so I could watch a little. And you were so proud of me. Do you remember that ballet master, Mr. Sitsky? Oh, I remember. He was so nice and proper. We all had to curtsy and say, good morning. Mr. Sitsky. Good morning, dear Deirdre. Good morning, Mr. Strident. <laughs> and so, and so, dear Deirdre, we will begin to go to bar. Excellent, excellent, dear Deirdre. And now, first position. Heels together, toes out. A few more years, you will dance for royalty. Button up. Why? I'm finished. So fast? What are you, the Blue Cross? I'm expensive, and I'm in a hurry. They should have flown you to the city. Flown me to the city? I'm not going to have bathroom privileges today. Why'd you fly? Don't you have a car? I got a car. I just don't feel like driving 300 miles. You should have taken a cab. 300-mile cab ride? You must be at least an heiress. Well, I'm an heiress, all right. I'm an heir to one of the bummest tickers this side of the cemetery. Now, could we get to some questions? Shoot. You're 11? 12 tomorrow, so it's not arterial sclerosis. Thanks. You got sick when you hit nine? Oh, I didn't hit nine. I clobbered it. Yeah, nine was a big year. So it's not congenital, huh? Have the chest pains been getting any worse? I think so. First, I suspected cardiovascular syphilis, but penicillin would have knocked that right off. I may not charge your father at all. I may just sue him. Rest. $200 a shot and he says rest? 500 a shot and he says rest. Are you going to charge my dad for your plane ticket? Of course. Do you think I do this for my help? 
Well, you're certainly not doing for mine. You're a tough kid. You gotta be in this business. What business? Dying. Mm -hmm. It's a big business. Oh, Doc, could you tell him that the pain's not so bad, you know? I sort of exaggerate. Rough playing games with adults, huh? It's a strain sometimes. Cheer up, Doc. You can't win them all. Happy birthday, kid. Did the dancing... Could have, but it didn't. She's very nice, isn't she? She knows some long words. Is your husband around? I know you couldn't make a thorough examination. When I bring her to your office, no. doctor... What do you mean, no? This is just a preliminary visit, isn't it? You don't have your equipment. I'll bring her to your office I where can't you have help all her. your equipment. Then why did you agree to see her? You had the whole history. The kid's alive, so you take a look. I'd recommend another opinion, but she's seen all the people that know anything. Save your money. For what? It's all right, Doctor. You don't have to say anything. You heard us? No. But you have heard it. Oh, yes. I don't see much point in hospitalizing her. She'd worry even more about you. What do you mean? She'd worry even more. The kid's trying awfully hard to be dignified about this. People ought to help. Now, if she's in pain, give her some of this stuff instead of what she's been taking, but not more than one every four hours. It's stronger than what she's been using. She'll, she'll be 12 tomorrow. Dr. Hallett? Dr. Hallett, what about a transplant? Why? You want your name in the papers? Doctor! Let it alone. warning on the label, but if you have any children, don't let them anywhere near this stuff. How long have you been a druggist? Oh, about 20 years. You mean you've never used this stuff for a child? Maybe once or twice, but those kids were extreme cases. Do you sell painted seashells? Why'd you knock? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Well, you never knock. Things change. You're going to be 12 tomorrow, so why'd you knock now? I bet you want something. Flowers, you do want something. Well, whatever it is, I'll have to give it a great deal of thought. Now, don't push me. I won't. I wonder if it knows that it's had it. Doesn't it know that its roots are all gone? Deirdre. I'm just musing, that's all. Don't listen, I muse a lot. She didn't knock. No hands available. You could have bumped or cleared your throat. I just don't think that quickly. People have just got to knock. God knows what could have been going on in here. Lunch. In style, in bed. Couldn't we sneak off to a nice little restaurant? Just two gossiping females let loose. A martini apiece and thousands of reputations to wreck. Sounds delicious. Maybe next week. Think we could swing it today? Not today, but maybe next week, Dee. Okay. But make it someplace smart and evil. Okay. Hello, Mrs. Clyde. Hi, Sarah. Nobody but nobody knocks. Why don't you take the door off and let the highway through? Why aren't you in school? It burnt down. It burnt? It was old. What? Philip, these people take you seriously. You want to have lunch with me, Philip? Depends.
No, thanks. <laughs> I thought of a surprise for your birthday. I'd like to discuss it. Well, it'll be some surprise. I'm writing a sketch starring you and me. Well, my father's doing the whole thing. Mine short. It wouldn't take much rehearsal. You don't say anything. I'm afraid Deirdre's resting now, Philip. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting about her dying. Philip! Don't frighten him. He's just repeating what I told him. Deirdre, you shouldn't have told him that. Well, then yell at me! My mother says that you could linger for a couple of years. Your mother's a fat... Deirdre! I'm sorry, Philip. It's all right. My father says the same thing. Back to school. Make sure you go to the right school, Philip. Mom, where's Daddy? I think he went to Drummond. He didn't come to see me this morning. Well, he's... You know. Mom, when you went with Daddy, were you jealous of other women? Well, well there are a lot of exotic females just waiting for you to make a mistake. Did you have to wear things you didn't want to wear? All the time. Like bikinis when it was cold? <laughs> Not that bad. But I, I had to borrow a lot of clothes so I could get through a week without repeating. Was he just fabulous when he kissed you? Fabulous. Was he just great to show off? Just great. And was it great to travel together? You know, like, I'll unpack and meet you in the bar. Oh, Mom. Was it all just great? You'll see for yourself. I won't know what to do with all the boys around here. Why, I could be old. Old one day, 25 years old. Even a day of problems. A trip to the obstetrician or a marriage counselor. A secret day with a married man. Just to be 25 for a flash. And it told me forever. Oh, Mom. Maybe we could find something that'll stop me from making everybody so unhappy. Maybe a, a new kind of pill. Deirdre, please don't ever talk like this again. What'll happen, a spanking? I remember when spankings used to hurt. What did you tell Deirdre about our latest doctor? Forget him, he's a quack. Hallett is not a quack. He doesn't know anything. Why doesn't Dr. Hallett know anything today? 
Yesterday he was a genius. Why? Because he can't help the child? Ruth, there'll be no more doctors. Are you making the final judgment on Deirdre? There have been 18 final judgments. And 18 more if necessary. Ruth, there'll be no more doctors. None. This is no longer a request. It's an order, a simple final order. Now, you've had your last disappointment, and Deirdre has had her last kick in the... Now, for God's sake, leave us some dignity. To hell with dignity! Do you want her to hate you? Yes, she can hate me! All the years of her life! Ruth, it's over! Now, we've had it! With planes and trains, and you drive it to nowhere. We've had that child on tour for two years! Our whole life has been waiting rooms and waiting! She's been probed, pierced, prodded by brilliant specialists who... Who, who don't even know her. They're not paid to know her. Whatever they were paid to do, they didn't do. Now, I bought that house to give us some joy. She will not be yanked back into a world that threw her out before she grew up. You bought this house to hide. You bought this house to keep people out, to keep out everything but you and Deirdre. Jean, you bought this house with all the years we'll never have. I don't have any plans for after. I'm... Deirdre's father, today. Her father? You've become her playmate. And my enemy. My enemy. Because I've loved you and Deirdre with all my heart. Because I've refused to say goodbye to Deirdre and you. Well, all right. If you two want to play games in your castle, go ahead. But on your own time, not mine. Ruth. It's her time. Her time. I'm only trying to fill it with some kind of world, some funny little world and of... And the pain! You hocus-pocus that away? Well, I don't believe in your hocus-pocus. I don't believe in your rhyming painkillers. I don't want her to be a princess. I want her to be old! Where is everybody? After all, it's almost my birthday. I should be hovered over. No, I shouldn't. There's too much hovering going around here anyway. Your mother's gone to get your cake. And your father's gone to pick up the costumes and the decorations. Maybe you have another party. I think you've had enough. Poor Daddy. He has to go through this whole show just for my delight and amazement. He has to sing happy birthday at the top of his lungs and keep his fingers crossed watching me blow out the candles. Blow them out from behind me so I don't exert myself. Deirdre, everyone's been looking forward to this so much. Your mother's... My mom's sore about wasting time on candles and cakes when she can be out in the bush interviewing witch doctors. You're terrible and ungrateful. That's me, the walking dead. You see what's happening in this house. Deirdre, there are no answers here. There are no answers here, there, anywhere. Your parents haven't taught you where to look. My parents taught me everything. They're wonderful parents. We still run out, that's all. We're all used up. Oh, Sarah. Who's gonna look after them when I'm gone? What will they do? Perhaps they're being punished for bringing you up in a home without faith. We had faith, maybe not your kind, but we had everything. We didn't need a god. Everyone needs God. Not if there's love and fun. Not if no one hurts anybody. People start having God over the house when they're sick or broke. Not before, but not me. I won't beg and I won't apologize because I haven't done anything wrong. I just wanted to roll up, that's all. Deirdre, I don't think there's any point in mentioning to your parents what, uh, what we've discussed. I won't, Sarah. You like this job. Why not keep it as long as possible? Oh, and Sarah, when it's all over, perhaps you'd like the castle. You don't look so surprised. I'm sure it could be packed and shipped anywhere. Win a nickel, win a dime, tell me who I am and what's my time. Daddy, I'm getting so unattractive. What? You are the loveliest of all time. I'm really starting to hate.
hate. Impossible, you. I won't allow it. You'll never hate. Oh, I'm beginning to, Daddy. If I leave hating, my life has been silly. I've just wasted a lot of your valuable time. Valuable time? We don't need time. Honest. Look. Look. Out there. There is no time. Where, Daddy? Out there. It's too dark to see anything. Oh, it's not true. Look. When the wind stops howling and the rain is dry when it reaches us. Why? Because we're special. We're traveling players. Where is the stage and what are the jokes? Where is the stage, Daddy? What are the jokes? Well, we'll make them up. We have. Daddy, one more promise. A promise that you can keep. Anything. Oh, anything, my darling. I don't want you to remember me as a witch. You? A witch? The dinosaurs will come back to the garden before you could be anything but a princess. I'm no princess. Please, not on my birthday. Sergeant Kutcher was a great cop. Did you know what he did to get on the force? He got stretched. He was a half inch too short for legal requirements. So we went to a place in Rochester and got stretched. I loved him. Well, I'm glad you invited him. Sergeant Kutcher says happy birthday. That's not a kiss. I'm 25, but with the lips of a woman of 20. What? Are you crazy? You're 12 today. Kiss me. I don't want to catch anything. Can't catch what I've got. You gonna miss me? I won't know what to do. I'll let you know what it's like if I can reach you. You will? Don't forget. Philip, a favor. Sure. Let's go over to the beach and you lie beside me. No! I'll never ask you another favor again, and I'll never annoy you again. I wouldn't know what to do. Well, you don't have to do anything. Just be next to me. I'd like to feel a man next to me once. A man? Me? I'm still not interested in sex. Besides. You're too skinny. Well, maybe. But you have to admit that you're interested in sex in principle. Everyone is. Well, I may be interested, but only in principle. What are you taking your eyelashes off for? I don't want you to lie down next to me as someone else. I want you to lie down next to me as me. Well, what if somebody comes? Got plenty of time before Daddy's play. Besides, what could they do to me? Nothing. But I could get lynched. My adventure. I'm going to keep my clothes on. I think you should take your shoes off. That'd only be polite. All right, but don't try anything. You're safe, Phil. It's 
a nice feeling. It's psychological. I don't care. Hold my hand. Dee? Your hand's so cold. I'm sorry. It's all right. Mine's warm. I'm trembling. Yeah. Hey. I hope sex is as nice as this. Will you hand me those two lanterns there? I'll get them. That's very kind of you, Sarah, but we always do this ourselves. I'm sure even Buddha would approve. All those other palaces, fortresses, cathedrals. Greek, Roman, Russian. I think Deidre's favorites were the ones where you made up the country. I kind of like the one we did about Karelia. <laughs> A nice place, Karelia. I really wanted this one to be the best. I wanted this one to be different. It's the final one. That's different. You too. Me too. So we're finally in an agreement. What an agreement. What a truce. I'm sorry, Ruth. I should have left you your doctors. I should have left you your fairy tales. What do we say to our child on our last birthday? seen a pagoda like that. You've never seen any pagoda. Okay, let's rehearse my play. Your play? You don't even have a script. I don't need one. We'll make it up as we go along. Well, if you don't have a script, why do I have to rehearse anything? Why do I have to do anything? Except wait. Because it's important. Because people died yesterday and the day before, like Sergeant Kutcher. You made up Sergeant Kutcher, didn't you, Philip? Well, didn't you? I had to, Dee. I'm sorry I had to. His wife hated him. Didn't even go to his funeral. 
Somebody had to love him. Somebody had to give him a reputation. Reputation? Why do you keep talking about reputation? Because reputation is all we have. All we have? Philip, do you really understand reputation? I really don't understand anything. But I'm trying. Reputation is what we leave behind. Reputation is how we are remembered. You know, like an echo that goes on and on and on. Reputation is all we have. Reputation is all you'll have. No, Dee. You make your reputation, and I'll keep it for you. I swear, so are your parents. How many people started things that they knew they couldn't finish? They could have said the hell with it. I'll never see it. But they didn't. For instance, my mother won't live to see me, President. Thank God. Philip, I want to believe everything you say, but you're young, like me. There's really nothing we can do about anything. There isn't? No. Except for one thing. We can die sooner than they expect. How? Well, there's millions of ways. Name one. All right. Like this! No! Ah! Sure, baby. She died before she was supposed to be born. Now, why do you want me to tell this to Dee? Because Rhoda Dolph would be entitled to be bitter. But she wasn't. She was grateful. She may not have been born at all. I read the odds against being born are three billion to four or something like that. Anyway, she made it. Philip, did you make up Rhoda Dolph? No. We were good friends. Before she was born? I had to. I make up everything. Philip. Why? Because I'm young. I only feel, well, I feel things, but I never... Experience them. When I make up things, there they are. I mean, Rhoda would just have to have blonde hair. I know it. I just know it. I think she would. Do you really believe in Rodadolf? I believe in Rodadolf. Well, Deidre's worth a million Rodadolfs. A million me's. You have to tell Deidre you believe in her. She knows I believe in her. Philip, you'll be a father one day, and you'll love your children like we love Dee. Yes, but I won't sit around and wait for them to die or build pagodas like tombstones. You think the pagoda's a tombstone? Everything around here is, and it shouldn't be, because Deidre Stride's alive. Of course she's alive. Then don't bury her. Don't come out there dressed like happy Chinese parents to put on a play about sky color and dragons when you can put on a play that helps Dee. Should be a play that helps me. Should be a play that helps me. That would help. <sighs> Maybe it should be a play that... Makes Deirdre laugh. Yeah! Should be a play that's funny. I just said that. Sorry. Should be a play about listening. Should be a play that your Rhoda Doff would like. She hated plays. I should have known. It should be a play that makes uh, Deirdre proud of me. She loves you. That's not good enough. It should be a play that makes her proud of me. Should be a play that lives forever. That's asking a lot. Should be a play that asks a lot. It should be a play that wakes the dead. That's asking a lot. Should be a play. Should be a play about reputation. That's it! <laughs> Hooray! Hooray! He stand away from the pagoda. 
while the writer rearranges a few things. And now, don't get upset. We won't. I hate bamboo curtains. I can't stand this one. This pagoda wouldn't protect a flea from a breeze. It looks better 500 years later. This floor <laughs> <laughs> Gee, what are you doing? <laughs> Dee? I'm fine. She is. You bet she is. Deirdre, you'd better come in the house. Don't fondle her, Sarah. Yeah, don't fondle her. You shut up. And that's enough, Sarah. You leave that boy alone. Yeah, leave the boy alone. Mrs. Stryden, this boy shouldn't be here. He's mentally unbalanced. We all have our problems, Sarah. Mrs. Stryden, you must stop this. Absolutely. I declare this house a house. <laughs> Philip, would you like to play Sarah's part in the play? I'll be a part. Philip. I'd like to play Sarah's part. Except I don't know the lines. Oh, none of us do. But they'll be rewritten by the time the play begins. Where should we do the play? The Bacoda's destroyed. We'll do it in the ruins. my surprise. You see, without an audience, there's no play. And you're not enough of an audience. Thank you. is good. But the emperor was not cheered. Sire, Dr. Fang says you can live another 200 years. Dr. Fang is a quack. <laughs> Let's send for Dr. Ho. Dr. Ho is a quack. <laughs> the father, General... I mean, the emperor... <laughs> generally a quiet ruler. Hit the ceiling. <laughs> Suddenly, there was a disturbance at the entrance. A disheveled person forced her way in. Sire! Sire! <laughs> there is a terrible rumor sweeping through the land. The populace thinks you are unhappy. They think you think that you will be forgotten after a few years of being despised. Ha, 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 ha. 
Don't believe them, sire. You will never be forgotten. Look at what you have done. I've done nothing. Sire, you wanted to be a good emperor. You were busy, that's all. Busy? Busy getting old and worrying. Worrying about staying alive. <laughs> Those stupid and vicious rumors were right. <laughs> <laughs> Sire, you can stop them. Cut out their tongues. Decree the end of rumors. No, no, no. No, that way, not that way. No, 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 no. Mr. Emperor, I order you to return to the populace and tell them that their emperor has stopped wasting time on minor matters. You tell them that their emperor wants to be remembered as an emperor who, 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 who cared about things even if he didn't get much done, because he started late. Disheveled person, tell them that people and emperors are no longer permitted to mope and whine. <laughs> as long as they can think and they can breathe in one drop of air from this Obscure, but powerful kingdom. Oh, yes, sire, yes! <laughs> oh, sire, I am so glad we met. I am so glad that you loved me first. And Last. And last. And last. And last. So they went inside and last. got rid of all the other wives and um, ate potato salad. <laughs> <laughs> and now, we of the cast would like to applaud our guest of honor, Miss Deirdre Strider. Speech! 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 I thank you for the loveliest play of my whole life. Daddy, I guess that emperor didn't get much done, but he tried. And his favorite wife loved him even more because she saw him change. She saw him begin. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> Philip and I, we haven't written or composed anything or even done anything. But until then, we have to use what's been left for us because they did leave it for us. They left us their reputation. Yes, they did. And all those good people whom they never met. And all those good people who lived before. And all those good people who live now. Thank you, Mom. Well, it's my birthday, and everybody's just going to have to admit that Deirdre Striden was a good idea. Because no matter what, it was a good idea. A great idea! <laughs> And sparkling beverages! You know, Deirdre Strident was a good idea. I'm so proud of you, Dee. Oh, Philip. I'd give anything to see you all grown up. Huh. You'd be a great lady by then. You wouldn't remember me. Philip, where are you going? I have a date with Sergeant Kutcher. Echoes live on. Step into life 
That's what you 